I was listening to a podcast recently from um, a podcast that was talking about climate and psychology. And there were psychologists and therapists there and they were talking about panic really. And they were talking about whether we should be panicking going back to Greta Thunberg's kind of famous speech where she said, I want you to panic. And they were kind of, opening up the question of should that that be the emotional place that we are of panicking should we be panicking and i think my answer to that is it sort of depends where you are and who you are because i think some of us should be panicking because i think many of us haven't actually absorbed the reality of the climate crisis they haven't actually absorbed what is actually going on and what it actually means. I think people know there's a climate crisis, but I think people don't understand how bad it is. I think people think it will mean the polar bears will go extinct and it will be a bit hotter and there won't be snow in winter. Someone said that to me. Someone said, um, oh, I, I think, oh, it'd be sad because I think I used to play in snow as a child and I think my child won't have that. People think that, all of which is true, but it is also worse than that. It's it's not, that's not what we're panicking about. Um, as sad as it would be if polar bears went extinct, if that's what you think this is about, then you're not paying attention because what this is about, as well as, of course, something that will affect lots of things in the natural world and lots of different species beyond ourselves, but it will affect us, it will affect you, it will affect me. What the climate crisis is about is something that is dangerous to you. Dangerous to you now. Not to polar bears on the other side of the world and not to your great-grandchildren. This is something that is dangerous happening in the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years to us. It is about whether we'll have the ability to grow food if it gets too hot to grow food. Um, you know, if we, if we start going into supermarkets and there is not food there, or there is food that is so expensive that we cannot afford it, um, or if our houses burn down in in extreme heat or flood or whatever, you know, we don't know exactly what this is going to happen. It's not going to happen exactly. The same to everyone. We don't know because it's, it's it's a chaotic kind of system, and exactly what will happen, we don't know. But this is there's a dangerous set of things that are coming towards us, and if you are not frightened of that, and if you are not panicking about that, then you've not really paid enough attention. I'm I'm, I'm sorry to say. Um, I said this, not this election, but the election before. I was at a, a hustings for my local MP. And the question I asked at that hustings was, I'm frightened, frightened about the climate crisis. Are you frightened? And most of them said no, which is kind of all I needed to know because I want my MP to be frightened about this. I want my MP to be panicking about this. I want our prime ministers and our presidents to be panicking and to be in crisis mode about taking the action needed to prevent human death through the climate crisis. So yes, we need to panic. Many of us need to panic. Our political system needs to be acting with urgency. But for those of us who realize that truth, panic is a very difficult place to stay. And I don't think we can stay there just physically to be in a kind of fight or flight adrenaline filled mode in our body. We can't sustain being constantly in that state in our body. That is such a stress response that will be so bad for our health, bad for our mental, emotional and physical health that we can't stay there, that we shouldn't stay there because to stay there and to stay in a, in a, place of fear and panic constantly in a way that will not enable us to to live to, because this world is full of 
good things still we do people still fall in love and and have friendships and 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 laugh at jokes and and have joyful time and make love and and spend time with friends and family and and pets and nature and and enjoy good food like the world is still full of good things to enjoy and if we're so full of panic about about the climate crisis that we're not in any sense enjoying these things then what are we fighting for in a sense um and how sustainably can we fight how sustainably can we do the action we need to do if we are in a state of panic all the time i don't think we can i think that the, the, the panic is part of a process the fear is part of a process and i think the jewish prophets have such wisdom on this the jewish prophetic hebrew tradition of what the prophets of, of of thousands of years ago said and did really provide a kind of model i think for me this is a, a an amazing resource walter brueggemann the bible scholar talks about this a lot he talks about the three kind of stages of of reality of telling the truth of the prophet going, this is the reality of what's going on. This is what's happening. There's, there's, there's people starving in the streets. This is, this is not good. Um, telling the truth, and then grief, then saying this, this is allowing that to enter into our hearts, to break our hearts. This is the reality, and we allow it to break our hearts. And in in that Hebrew tradition, saying it breaks God's heart as well. And then, and, and only then, talking of hope, saying here's a vision of the world as it could be. Here is, is shalom um, in, in, the, in the Jewish tradition, of a vision of, of peace and wellness, a world where, where humans are in right relationship with one another, with human beings, with nature, and with God. That's, that's the vision of wholeness that is hope, that is the hope, the dream, the dream we can see on the horizon, the promised land over there that we can get to and that already kind of lives in our hearts. But that doesn't mean we also just get to then live in the, in the, in the hope constantly either. I think we're, this is not just a one-time thing. We just go through, tell the truth, grieve, hope, and then we live in hope. I think we can go back and forth in a kind of spiral of all these things and that that's okay. But every day or every hour we can have fear and have grief and 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 act and have hope back and forth and back and forth. We absolutely do need to be in a state of panic because we want to have a sense of what the reality of what's going on because there is no health in being in denial. there is no health in not seeing the truth of the world we live in, the truth of what is happening to our world. We need to understand that and understand that we need to be in crisis mode, acting in crisis mode to act, to transform the world, to be in a process of transformation. We need to be allowing it to enter our hearts and we need to be having a sense of a direction of hope that we're going towards. All of these things we need to panic yes we need fear and we need grief and we need action and we need hope we need all of these 